Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Anime Review Show here on the Otaku Crib. This is the show where I, your host Josh E.T., tech out what's new and hot in anime and give you my first impressions of it. And this week I took a look at Akame Ga Kill. Now Akame Ga Kill came to my attention because it's just a name that's kept coming up and has been getting pretty popular, so I wanted to check it out for myself. Akame Ga Kill centers on protagonist Tatsumi, who moves from the countryside moving to the Imperial capital, hoping to earn fame and wealth to save his struggling village. Now, what our would-be hero doesn't realize is that the Imperial capital is a cesspool of corruption, to the point where the upper class is not only greedy, but downright sadistic, with our first episode featuring a family of serial killers. However, through this, Tatsumi is introduced to the members of Night Raid, a group of assassins who carry out missions of execution against these greedy, corrupt, and sadistic individuals. And after meeting them, Tatsumi is quickly inducted into their ranks and begins the life of an assassin. Now, my opinions of this show? Well, as some of you know, I have the three episodes rule about an anime series, and that you gotta watch the three episodes before you're gonna get the gist and decide whether or not you like it. A comic got kill didn't need three episodes. I was in after episode one. It opened on great action sequences, it was dark and extremely bloody. It's been a while since I've seen an action show like this that did gory well, to the point where it was gratuitous but not overbearing. And the funny thing is, considering the show kind of has the shonen jump art style, which usually doesn't get too, too bloody, it was surprising how well it worked with the way the show looked, particularly with female characters. But speaking of those characters, they are amazing, with the only one who's kind of weak tea so far, and I think it's only because it's early on in the series, is main character Tatsumi, because he's still holding on to his slightly naive country boy attitude, but he can't change that because he's a naive country boy, right? But the rest of the members of Night Raid are super cool. Although at first they may seem like standard anime archetypes, you actually have to give them each their episode because almost all of them go through this kind of bait and switch where you think they're some sort of standard cookie cutter character and then it just goes right out of left field and you realize that they're a very three-dimensional and full character, the perfect example being Akame. Akame first comes off as being you know, your stoic, she's been trained from childhood to kill people and that's all she knows. And at first glance it seems like that. However, quickly into one of the first couple episodes you realize that she cares very deeply about people and will actually express it openly and honestly. And another member of Night Raid who I really love was Bullet, not only because he has an amazing suit of armor for a power, he's also quickly outed as being a gay character, but not in a particularly offensive way. However, the only problem I do have with Bullet is that his hair is strikingly similar to a certain character from one of my other favorite animes. To cap things off with me loving this show was the introduction of the Imperial Arms, which are 48 ancient weapons that carry grand and mysterious powers. Each of the members of Night Raid, with the exception of Tatsumi so far, have one of these Imperial Arms, and their various effects are cool, ranging from, you know, a scissor blade all the way to a gun that gets more powerful the more trouble you're in. And this was a great hook for wanting to watch more episodes. You want to see the other weapons. I want to know if Tatsumi is going to get his own. And they just make and contribute to the really cool action style of this show. And the final cap on why this show is going to be great and why I'm telling you to go watch Kame Ga Kill is the fact, like in all classic and great anime series, you have truly an utterly psychotic villain. And if you don't believe me, just get in enough episodes to meet General Estef. Get to that crazy bitch and tell me that is not a perfect villain. She almost was like a female version of Million Knives from Trigun to me. And this is only initial impressions. She is clearly nuts and clearly powerful, which is going to make for a very interesting summary of Akame Ga Kill. Cool fights, cool weapons, great characters, crazy ass villains. Go watch Akame Ga Kill, especially if you're an action fan. 
you will not regret it. So thank you very much for joining me for this review. Don't forget to subscribe for more and go check out some of our other videos, including the cosplay feature videos I've been doing for all of its cosplay. You can go check out their channel for some great coverage. And stay tuned for more from me and the Otaku Crypt. I'm Joshy e. T. Thank you so much for watching.